Okay, guys. <clears throat> I'm going to try to do this video to explain these things a little bit better. Because you really, really need to get the hang of this. You really need to have a basic understanding. Because what I'm seeing out here is it's not the big things, guys, that's going to trip you up. It's not the big things at all. It's the tiny, tiny, moment-by-moment moment things that trip you up. It's, uh, you already know that, um, how to avoid the big, bad stuff. It's not that hard to do. It really isn't. We're kind of raised with those kind of moral um, guidelines set in us as human beings. It's not that's that's the problem. It's the moment-to-moment, -moment, little tiny decisions that you make that is messing people up. Because what you're not understanding is in that split second of deciding whether or not to smile or frown in an individual information, I mean, situation, then you will set yourself on a path that every moment after that will become bigger and bigger, depending upon the direction that you choose. So if you choose in a moment to smile instead of frown, then you will be led to more smiles and easier smiles and easier smiles. If you choose to frown, the same thing will occur. If you choose to frown, then more things will be draw, drawn to your attention that will cause you to frown more and more and more and more. Now, every time, the longer it takes you to catch well, the, the frowns, the harder it is to get out of it. Because in the moment, in the situation, um, I've heard this said, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? And this is very, very true. You are creating this circumstance. So nine times out of ten, you are going to feel like you're in the right whenever you're frowning. Because you make the call to the universe to begin with. You created the situation that's causing you to, to frown. Most of the time, people don't create circumstances there are bad circumstances where they don't think they're in the right. Most people think they're in the right. But it doesn't really matter. The point is not whether you're right or wrong anymore. The point is where you're vibrating at. And if you want to be happier. And happier means you have to give up on all the right, knowing that you're the one that did it from the beginning. You always have been the one that's done it from the beginning. So in order to kind of explain this maybe a little bit better, and you've heard me talking about the prisms, different aspects of you, that um, you're looking at uh, little single now moments, one right after the other, so that it appears that you're going through time and space when you're not really. Okay? So I'm going to use a couple of things that maybe will help this, I hope. Now I want this to be a circle, and this circle with all of the different prisms, all the way around the edges, they're just think little prisms, prisms, prisms. Now this is going to be, just think of, you're in the middle of this gigantic, huge ball that's just got prisms, little jaggedy prisms all the way around, going all different directions, okay? And this is you in the middle. And let's say this is um, me. And the same thing is true here. And this is, I don't know, someone else. <laughs> someone else. And let's just say that we're all interacting. All right. So we'll use me. Now, in this moment, let's say that I'm focusing on this prism right here. In that moment. In this moment, think of these like balls that are spinning. Okay? Now, as you guys know... In order for people to interact with each other, they have to be within range of each other. So it has to be a certain vibratory range. Now, you can still, like, I'm in a good mood and you're in a bad mood, but if we're in a certain vibratory range, we can still interact with each other. Okay? But many things will occur in order for us to, to do that interaction. I'm just going to tell you about two of them. It's so complex that I couldn't even begin to explain them all. But I'm hoping with these two concepts, maybe it'll get to my point and will help you guys live day to day a little bit easier. The first one is to understand that 
let's say that I'm in a really bad mood and you're in a really good mood and we get on the phone together, we Skype together. Because I'm in a really bad mood and you're in a really good mood, and let's say here you're at the top of the range, you're at the top, and I'm at the bottom of the range. In other words, I'm in a bad mood, you're in a good mood. You're in a good mood, I'm in a bad mood. And we are barely within range of each other. Now, in order for us to always, there's movement, always. And we will assume because you're in a good mood, you are probably raising your vibrations. They're going up. And if I'm in a bad mood, I'm probably lowering mine. And if we're barely within range at this point when we're having this conversation right here, then as you go to move up and I go to move down, we're going to separate. Something has to happen if we step outside of our range. Now several things can happen. Because I'm in a bad mood and I'm watching what you say. You could be saying something like, Wow, I'm having such a great day today. I really wish you were here to have fun with me. But because I'm in a bad mood, I'm going to look at it through those goggles, those in a bad mood goggles. And I could hear your words like, oh, so you're being catty about it, huh? You're making fun of me because I'm not having a good day. And you're just gloating over the fact that I'm having a bad day and you're having a good one. Okay? Now, you in a happy place didn't mean that at all. But it doesn't matter what you meant. What matters is how I perceive it. And if I'm coming from a negative place, I will always look at it through the negative goggles. Just like somebody, just like you, looking at me, if I said something catty like, well, I wish I was there with you too, you, from a good place, would probably have heard, I really wish that I was with you, in a very positive way, looking through your good goggles. Okay? That's one of the mechanisms in place that deal with issues of people that are close to being without outside of range. Now, if we keep going and you don't come down and I don't go up, and we continue to separate, after having that little spat, I'll probably get mad and try to pick a fight. If you don't fall for it and lower your vibrations, then what will happen is, well, many things can happen. Uh, there can be a phone disconnection. Somebody can interfere. You could drop the phone into a Coke and, and get cut off. Something will happen where this interaction has to stop if we're outside of range of each other. And it will not, will not be able to talk to each other again until we are within range again. Now, even though we're barely within range here, prism-wise, we're still, and think that these three people and many, everybody else too, is all within a giant prism of this game, okay? So even though we're both still in the game, I could be on a vibration that's much different than yours, operating in a different part of the game, but will be inaccessible to you. Now, all humans operate with the linear time-space game, or at least all of them that I'm aware of. I could probably look. There might be ones that, for periods of time, step outside. But for all practical purposes, all humans are living within the linear time-space illusion. Now, there are also trained animals or pets who live in linear time space. But the, for the most part, most of the planet, the animals, the elements, the, um, the planet, the plants, the elementals, and most of the animals, and insects, etc., birds, everything, they operate in now time. So they're kind of just a background for the humans to to live in their, um, have their experience in linear time space. So they stay pretty much in the now, always in the now. They don't, they don't come outside of that. But humans do. And when I'm talking about a circle here, let's talk about this other person down here. This other, we'll just put other. And I'm going to tell you, this other is a long-term human. And long-term humans have the more prisms than anybody. They've just collected them. They just keep building and building and building. And a super long-term human has the most of all. They have more prisms than anybody. Me, 
over here since this is my first life and I'm 58 years old, I don't have very many prisms around mine, which is probably easy, uh, makes it easier for me to see um, how many I've got and how many options that I've got going at any given time. Now, me, think of it like this. For one of my prisms, just one little section like that, a long-term human could have fractaled down and created, oh, I don't know, a million prisms to my one. It's that many. They have a lot of options. Lots and lots of options. All right? Now that you've got that in mind for a minute, now, let's go over here again. Let's say this is me, and I'm interacting with you. And we're having a happy um, interaction. We're joking, we're cutting up, we're on Skype. And let's say that um, X number two walks in my door, okay? And he snaps at me for some reason. And that triggers me to go back to a negative feeling that I have about him due to our past. In that interaction, I choose, I choose to lower vi my vibration. As that happens, I quickly move prisms over here. And I land over here sort of, kind of, although you're never still, but for the sake of this analogy, I land over here on a much lower vibration. During this interchange, at this point, you will be listening and hearing the exchange. When you listen and hear that exchange, you will have the option of, or I will have the option of watching you and seeing you get angry at him with me, at which point you will move to over to a completely different prism and we will still be talking, but on a much lower vibration than we were up here. We will have done it together. Okay? All right? But if I'm not paying attention to you at all, what will happen is if I'm not giving any attention to this, what will happen is you don't have to do anything, really. You don't have to do anything at all. Okay? What is going to happen is automatically this ball of prisms is going to rotate. Think of it as rotating. And this, now, now I've rotated it down to this lower vibration. Your ball will immediately rotate and I will be immediately matched with a range of options to put my attention on with you. Okay? It will automatically rotate. But my vibration will only, the, whatever vibration I am at at any given time, everyone, every human that's around me, their little ball of prisms will immediately turn and match m my vibration. Or they'll, they'll be kind of an option that I can look at. So it will turn if you're in good vibration and I change my vibration, what will happen is I will watch you periodically. And depending upon how you respond or how I choose to respond to your reaction, let's say that you just continue being happy. And I look at you, now I get mad because you're supposed to be my friend. You should side with me. So now I'm mad at you too. Okay? So what I'll get, because I'm mad at you too, this will rotate around until I get an aspect of you that is over within my lower vibratory range of everything from lowering your vibration significantly to being mad at him with me or being confused and just stumbling. But whatever it is, it will rotate around so that it matches within a range of my vibratory low point. Okay? You, where you are, won't have anything to do with that at all. Nothing whatsoever to do with that at all. This has everything to do with, um, and let's say this other person is, uh, um, I don't know, Stephanie. Stephanie hears what's going on. He, she comes walking and hears what's going on. At that point, whatever I'm vibrating at, 
what I will interact with on Stephanie's prisms will be the one that matches me vibratorily. It'll be right here. The same vibration that I'm vibrating at. And let's say I catch myself, okay? I catch myself and I go, wait a minute. I am not going to let this interaction with him bring me down at all. So now I went from up, interacting with you up here, this aspect of you. Then I drop, get in a bad mood, lower, and this spins around. And now this part is interacting with this lower vibration, you. And this spins, and Stephanie comes in, and I match with her here, but then I continue on the prisms, or really I'd go back, but we'll put it over here. And I go back up. What happens is Stephanie sort of spins. Think of it like that. It's the best analogy I'd come up with. So that now I'm interacting with Stephanie in a higher vibration, and we completely blow off what happened with Steve. He doesn't pay any attention to it. Stephanie and I start visiting. Now you and I, because I just didn't give it any energy at all, now you and I are back up to the higher vibration. And now I've done it consciously, so I'm even higher than I was. And yours spins. Yours spins around. So that it doesn't have anything to do with Stephanie. It doesn't have anything to do with you. It has everything to do with me and me alone. Do you understand? So getting mad at the other guy is a waste of your time because you cannot interact with the other person except within range of whatever you're vibrating at. Because of this, every interaction, to the, from the tiniest interaction to the world at large, around you, whatever you see, whatever you feel, whatever you think, is the truth around you is nothing more, nothing more than a mirror of your own vibration. So to fix the problems out there in the people around you or the world around you is a waste of time. You will never be able to fix it from out here. Because if you consider that you need to make, uh, if I came over here and I said, well, I need to make you happier, or I need to make Steph happier, and I try to do it from outside, then yes, I could maybe move an inch a little bit over, but ultimately I would start resenting it, I'd be tired, and I'd be right back down to the lower vibrations again. When you're interacting with anybody else and the world around you at large, there's only one important information, only one. How are you feeling about the interaction with that individual or the, or the world at large or anything in between? Okay. If you are seeing people, if you are seeing or feeling or hearing people being not nice to you, if you see the world not a pleasant place, if you see things that are bad in any way, shape, or form, from the tiniest thing to the largest thing, from hurting your feelings by frowning at you to world wars and famine and hunger, uh, famine and hunger and death and disease, anything along those lines, there is only one way that you can fix that, and that is you. You see, it's not, it doesn't matter to me what you do. I mean, I'm going to give you this information and I want you to have your experience the way that you were meant to have it. And of course, I'm always going to be encouraging you to have a better life, a happier life, uh, a more pleasant experience. But ultimately, that's your business. It's not mine. My job is to be over here and be me and to spend my time raising my vibration to this point so that everyone around me spins around and their prism matches mine so that I don't care if I run into a serial killer. 
If they're talking to me, they're in a higher vibration. And what the rest of the world is, is doing is not relevant to me. All I want to know is how does it look to me? How does it feel to me? How are people interacting with me? Because that mirrors where I am. Where I am. So if people are being mean to me. That's my fault. That's my fault. I am vibrating too low. If I was vibrating high enough, no one can be mean to me. If the world is not a perfect place in my eyes, it's because I don't believe that it can be yet. It is my job because these are always spinning, always spinning. So your experience and my experience and everyone else's experience will be completely different from each other. Because that's what we do as creator gods. We create experiences that are very unique to each other. Otherwise, it'd be a waste of time because we're all part of one. So in this spinning game, in this spinning game, until you understand totally and completely that every interaction that you have is simply a guideline to help you do better or it's a guideline to say you're doing great, keep on continuing on, then you will struggle. Because as long as you're trying to fix the world from out here by helping this person or this person or the world in general, you'll never get it done. You'll never get it done. Because then it goes back to that vibration of needing to help people, needing to help the planet, which will keep you two aspects with other beings that need your help. By vibrating on, I got this, and that everybody else knows what they're doing too, and they're gods and they can handle their own situation no matter what it looks like to me. By allowing others to do their thing and to be totally 100% focused on me, and my reaction to everything around it, that's how I guide myself to 5D. And understand, 5D is already there. There's many, many beings already there. It's, it's right here. You don't have to go anywhere. You just have to vibrate enough to join everybody else. Like I said, most of Gaia is already there. And my trick is kind of like Deb from New Zealand, sometimes she's feeling kind of crappy and she gets to moving too fast and her, and her physical body can't keep up and it starts to feel kind of draggy and weak. So you have to kind of, as you raise your vibrations, because we're doing this in one lifetime, things that, that other entities have take, taken millions of lifetimes to do, we are going up in one and usually less than one. Usually it's a couple decades or less that we're trying to move. So it becomes this little tricky deal of balancing your physical body and raising those vibrations, keeping that in balance. So you try to defractal everything while you're trying to merge everything and keep everything balanced. Change every belief system you've ever had from one of, I have no control over anything, I am a poor lowly human to I am a God and this is my responsibility. And it's the only way out. It's the only way out. So as difficult as this may sound to you, this is the only way out. And in this, you have complete and total control at all times. If something bad happens, you can immediately jump on that and go, okay, why did I do that? How did I do that? How can I avoid it from happening again? Let me get back on my happy vibe and move forward again, one step at a time, one little tiny baby step at a time, moment to moment. But when you start this downward spiral that you do, it's much easier to say, hey, I didn't start this. They did. That's what most people do. Well, it wasn't my fault. It was their fault. You've got to understand that whether you knew what that first tiny step was that, that blossomed into the next and the next and the next, it all is you doing it. You are 
vibrating at such a way that you could only interact with certain aspects of these other beings. It's the way it works. Now, all of these aspects out here of me, the reason why I don't do what other people say, I'm not going to do what the, what the quantum physicists, um, scientists say, where they say, well, you put your attention on it and it all collapses into this one moment. Well, it does for you. It does for you in that moment from the perspective of being in this human body suit. But the other ones are still there. And the bigger part of you is giving energy and is following all the aspects of you in all of the different options at all times. Now, from this body suit, you probably are not going to be able to do that. That's a higher self type thing that's keeping an eye on every single one of them. But um, from this skin suit with, with your amnesia, you do have the option still to choose which one of these infinite aspects of self, they're not truly infinite if you're a starseed, but there's so many of them, just put that in your mind, that there are infinite number of them, because that'll be a closer number to the number I could give you. So you do, from this skin suit perspective of self, you do have the option of which one of these infinite aspects of yourself to put your attention on. They're all there, feeling good, feeling bad, within a range, depending upon where you are as you move up the scale. They're all there. You can choose whichever one you want to pay attention to. No harm, no foul on that. But if you go the happier and happier route, it just feels better than paying attention to the not-so-happier parts. As always, you have the right to do whatever it is that you would like to do. My happier and happier... Uh, concept is only because from inside of this, in within the skin suit, with amnesia, your belief system is on linear time space. So when you're changing, moving around on these different aspects through all of these now moments, the group together one at a time and create your belief of what you believe is your linear, linear time space, past and, and present, in doing that, you can pay attention to any of these that you want to. I'm just saying um, you'll feel better if you follow happier and happier. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Well, that's it for this one. Hopefully that helped you guys. I hope. We'll see. All right. I love you guys so much, and I'll talk to you later. Bye now. Future.